This is Kat with Beta Halik, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the Polynesian palm earrings using the two hole check glass kite beads. Now, I have some of those beads right here on my table, so I just want to start by kind of giving you a little uh, background on what these beads are. So, I have a couple of needles here, and I'm just going to show you where their two holes are oriented. You'll sort of see that as we make our project here in just a moment, but just to give you a little overview. So, you're going to get those two holes running right through there, and the kite beads, it sort of becomes an oblong diamond shape. So they're really fun, and they have a nice thickness to them, which makes them great to make a beautiful pair of statement earrings. So we're gonna do that here in just a moment. And I wanna show you that I made a couple of different colors here. In this video, I'm gonna be doing the purple and rose gold, but I did start this other pair here that has a beautiful bronze and teal. And then I just wanna draw your attention up to the beautiful colors that we have up top here. So just choose your favorite color of kite bead and your favorite color of Toho size 15O, and you can create these beautiful earrings. So for today, I'm gonna to be using a size 12 beading needle. And then I have some crystal fire line in the six pound. And then you're probably going to need a pair of chain nose pliers and a pair of snips or you can use a thread zap which I'll show you how to use in this video. So if you have all of your supplies ready to go and of course I chose these earring hooks here you can choose any earring hooks and I'll show you how easy that is to adapt but if you have all of your supplies we'll go ahead and get started. All right so I actually already have threaded my needle with about three and a half feet or so of my crystal fire line so I'm just ready to go. So what I wanna start by doing here is I'm gonna kinda of kick some of my kite beads down here and you're gonna need nine to start that center circle. So go ahead and pick up on the short side there and you're gonna pick up nine of those beads. Let's see, six, seven, eight and nine, and I'm gonna slide them all the way down towards the end of my thread, and I don't need a very long tail, maybe about six inches or so, and I'm just gonna take them and tie an overhand knot, bringing them together here, and you'll see that they'll need to kind of flip around before we tie our second knot there, there we go. So just kind of bringing those together, and you don't wanna make it too tight, you don't wanna crowd them too much but go ahead and then tie a second overhand knot. So that'll anchor our first center piece of work. All right, and just because I wanna get my original tail out of the way right away, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread a second needle onto that side, and I'm just gonna weave this through a couple of the adjacent beads. All right. And you're just going to want to go through one at a time. And because you want your beadwork to be taut, but not too taut, you might have a little trouble initially kind of getting your needle through there. But that's why I recommend just going through just that one bead at a time. There we go. All right. And I just needed to go through a couple of beads there. No need to go all the way around. You'll be all right. And now I'm just going to take my thread zap here, take my safety off and I'm just going to zap that tail. There we go. All right, so now my beadwork is nice and clean and ready to go. Reattach my safety and we're ready. All right, so I'm just gonna go through one bead going the other direction just to kind of secure that knot there. All right, so now our first thing is we're gonna go from that second hole and we gotta be coming out that, or I'm sorry, coming out that first hole when we wanna be coming out that second hole. So I'm just turning my thread around and you're gonna create a little tiny thread bridge, but that'll kinda of sit right nicely into your beadwork, just like that. All right. I tend to kinda of flip around my work as I, as I weave, so just um, do what is comfortable for you. All right, so now we're going to pick up one seed bead, and let me put some closer down here. There we go, so I have one seed bead, and now I'm going to pick up on the large side of the kite bead, and then one more seed bead, and I'm gonna go through the next hole there, and string that down. 
So there we are, and I'm just gonna repeat that. One seed bead, one kite bead on the large side, and one seed bead going through. Now repeating again, one seed bead, one large side, and one seed bead. And one more final time, so you have four total. All right, there we go. And now this is what our beadwork looks like. So now I'm gonna to continue to go all the way up and around the top, but instead of adding additional kite beads, I'm just going to be adding three seed beads in between. So just picking up three seed beads and going into the next kite bead there. There we are. Picking up three seed beads, going into the next kite bead, and just all the way around until you get back to the other side. And I love using these 15 beads because it just adds that little metallic sparkle, but they're so tiny that you can sort of manipulate them as you need in your beadwork. Okay, so I'm coming to the other side here, so you can see that I'm going through that kite bead. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through the next seed bead, through the kite bead, and you can do this one bead at a time. If it's, if it's not working, again, don't force it. These are glass beads, so you don't wanna go too far. All right, oops. <laughs> and don't tug it out of your fingers. <laughs> All right. So now I am coming out the side of my kite bead right there. So what I'm gonna wanna do is turn my thread around so that I'm coming out the second hole of my kite bead. So let me just kind of lay my work down so you can sort of see. So we added our kite beads along the bottom and then added three coming up and over the top and then came down through here and around through that kite bead. Now you'll notice I did not pick up this particular seed bead right here, so we're gonna leave him just where he is. So now we're coming out this direction. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna pick up a kite bead on the large side and go ahead and slide that all the way down so that it sits nice and flush like that, so it's sort of jutting out. All right, and now what I wanna do is I wanna pick up one seed bead and I want to go right back through that hole I just strung. Because I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture that seed bead. So make sure that is nice and taut. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up another kite bead here on the large side. And now I'm going to pick up three seed beads. Pick up another kite bead on the large side. And I'm going to go into that second hole on that next kite bead right there. And I'm just gonna repeat. So pick up another kite bead, three of my seed beads, another kite bead, and I'm gonna go into the next one. There we go. And picking up a kite bead, three seed beads, that other kite bead there, and I'm going to go into that last hole. All right, so let me show you where our work is at this point. We've just strung that bottom row there going through each of the three. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to connect, but instead of going and adding one more kite bead and adding that extra bead, you're gonna see how it's a little bit different. So I just need one more kite bead down here because we wanna finish off our look. So now what you're going to do is you're going to add, there we go, I just need a little tug. We're gonna add five of our seed beads here. All right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the next hole there. All right, 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add six seed beads. Let me just kind of kick some out here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm going to go into the next kite bead. And now because the spaces are uneven, what I'm going to do is I'm going to only add three seed beads. There we go. And just continuing. So now again, because we're in that big space, we're going to add six. There we go. And now add three. And just continuing again. Six seed beads. Four, five, and six. Six? Right, yep. <laughs> Always double check before you move on. One, two, and three. And last one, six seed beads. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And going through that kite bead. Oops. And it looks like I found a little seed bead that has a smaller hole. So what, this can sometimes happen. All right, and he's the culprit. So I'm just gonna set him aside. So I have one seed bead, two, three, four, five, and I'll pick up a fresh one. And just go ahead and slide that over my needle. Oops, this one too. Or maybe that was the one. Just set them aside. Sometimes this can happen with Toho seed beads. It can happen with actually a lot of seed beads. So don't get frustrated. It just, you know, sometimes they're just not perfectly coated. There we go. But in this whole time I've been doing it, I've only found one. So that's actually pretty good. <laughs> All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add four seed beads, two, three, and four. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch and go through the seed bead that is already there to complete those five, just like so. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up, let's see, one, two, three, four, and five. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm actually gonna catch all three of these seed beads coming up the side there. So I'm just connecting this all together. There you go, so you have that nice little bridge and that nice little connection. Now just continue your thread pass. And again, we're getting a little tight with our thread, so just be gentle and just kind of wiggle your work around. You can go through one kite bead, or you can see I just caught one of my seed beads there, but we're going to go all the way up and through. And when we get to our top portion here, we're going to be adding on that loop to create that nice little loop for our earring hook. So you're going to go through, you can see I'm at the top one right here. So I'm going through one seed bead here. And now I'm going to pick up five seed beads, four and five, skipping over that center seed bead and I'm going to go into that third seed bead there and I'm actually gonna to try to go down through that kite bead as well, all in one step. There we go. So I, I create that nice little loop at the top. All right, so now we're just gonna to continue to get all the way around here to connect up the rest of our beadwork. And we are almost finished. There's going to be one more embellishment that we're going to add to the bottom here. All right. And one, two, three, four, and five. And go ahead and go through all of those seed beads. You might not be able to catch them all at once. And down through those two. All right. And now what we're going to want to do is go down through that kite bead. And again, we're getting a little thick, but don't worry about it. You'll just work your way through. All right, so now I'm coming out that kite bead right there. And what I want to do is I want to go into only the first two seed beads. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up three seed beads. I'm going to skip over two. Oops. <laughs> don't knock them off your needle, though. One, two, three. Okay, three seed beads. 
skipping over two, so then now you're just gonna kind of wiggle your needle in to go through the last two seed beads right there. And this is just gonna create that nice little extra touch of embellishment at the bottom. So now we're gonna continue going through that kite bead. And go through all three of those seed beads. I'm trying to do this all at once, but definitely be patient. Going through that kite bead there. And you're only going to do that little embellishment on the places where we have those six seed beads. So here again, we're just going through two. Picking up three seed beads, one, two, three. Skipping over two and going into the next two there. Oh, I'm trying to get greedy by going through my kite bead all at the same time. There we go. You can always kind of bend your work. The idea with this earring is that it's going to be a little, um, a little loose, a little, it's gonna have a little bit of movement to it, but you do wanna keep your tension fairly tight. Just make sure that you're not so tight that you're going to be cracking those beads. We get a lot of questions here at Beadaholic about tension. And it's just, it's kind of a personal thing, but also you have to understand that you're providing structure with all of these thread passes. So sometimes we use a four pound um, thread. For this one, I'm using a six pound because I want to give it that extra structure because believe it or not, I'm not doing that many thread passes where it would actually affect my beadwork. So just kind of a, a, a little tip if you're, you know, just new to this or, or kind of starting out and wanting to explore different weights of thread. That is why that is done, is just to kind of see there are some things where you're gonna want that extra structure. So, all right, so we are coming towards the end here. We have one more embellishment, and then I'm going to show you how to tie off your beadwork here, and then how to just add that earring hook, and then you'll be all set to go. But this is such a fun little project, and I hope you decide to you know choose your favorite colors and really make something fun with this. And these are great two whole seed beads to incorporate into other designs as well. All right, one, two, three. Here we go. <laughs> Looks like I was just gonna get one on that pass. <laughs> All right, now I'm going through that second seed bead there. And I know these are tiny, but I Hope I've done a good job of explaining for you here today. And now I'm just gonna kinda go up through the next few seed beads here and follow my thread pass. And when you feel that you're in a, at a comfortable spot, just take your needle and you can see that I've caught my thread under there and I'm just gonna loop it around, take my needle through and just tie a little knot. Give it a nice little tug, make sure that is nice and tight. And now I'm just gonna kinda wiggle my needle through a few more here. And I'm just gonna go up the side just to give it a little extra security. All right. There we go, and I'm just gonna do one more little knot. And go through one more bead. I just want one more bead, just for security. All right, there we go. All right, so that is our earring. So now I'm going to zap off that thread and you can see that I have at least a good foot left over. So, you know, I always say better safe than sorry with the amount of thread that you're gonna use, so. But it's up to you. I used about three, three and a half feet or so. But you can probably get away with two, just I like to have a little bit extra. All right, so the last step is to take those chain nose pliers and take our earring hook here, and you're just going to gently bend it open, slip it onto our earring here, and bend it close. And this is the same technique you would do as if you were opening and closing a jump ring. 
So there you are. That is how to make the Polynesian Palms earrings. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. And as always, you can find all of these supplies and even more videos at bedaholic.com.